standing wave ratio. And we'll get into the details here in a minute. Um, you, you ask me what time it is, and I'll tell you how to build a clock. So here goes. Uh, think, of, think of everything in very, very slow motion. Okay? So your transmitter pumps out a waveform. Let's call it just catch one wave. It's a, an impulse of RF. And it goes out into your coax. Now your coax is, let's say, it comes in different impedances. Let's say the characteristic impedance of your coax is 50 ohms. That doesn't mean it has 50 ohms of resistance. That means that it wants to see, that it will present a ratio of 50 volts for every amp of current. That's what 50 ohms means. 50 volts for every amp of current. So this wave goes traveling out the, um, the coax, da 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 You know, we're thinking at the speed of light here. So la da 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 it goes out, and it hits your perfect antenna. And that wave goes out into the antenna and is radiated out into the universe and is never seen again. There is, so that's, that's a perfect match. You have a 50 ohm feed line, you have a 50 ohm antenna, you have the wave energy goes out, out the coax, out the antenna, disappears into the, into the void, okay? Now let's say we have a, an imperfect antenna, which is like all of them. And let's say it's not exactly 50 ohms resistive, which means it may have some residual capacitance, it may have some residual inductance, or it may, ha may not be uh, re 50 ohms resistive, like a dipole that's close to the ground might be 35 ohms or even less. So let's start at the transmitter again. The wave comes rolling out of the transmitter, goes rolling down the coax, and, and the voltage and current will be 50 ohm relationship, 50 volts for every amp, so this wave goes shining down your coax, and yes, it is light, so it's shining, so it shines down your coax, and it hits the antenna, and some of the energy gets radiated out from your antenna, but some of it doesn't because of the mismatch, either stored energy and inductance or capacitance or, or a mismatch of resistance. So energy will now reflect back toward the, toward the transmitter. So it goes rolling out, boing, hits the antenna, some of it comes rolling back, then it comes rolling back and it's rolling back. And somewhere there will be, for a given frequency and a given coax length, there will be a place, a physical place, where the next wave coming out of the transmitter, if you will, collides with the reflected wave coming back from the antenna. And at that place, uh, one of two things will happen depending on exactly where it is. Um, one of the two things that can happen is the waves will add to each other. And so in that physical spot on, in the coax, there will be a higher than original voltage present at that physical spot. And that spot doesn't move. And then a little farther down, there will be a place where the two waves subtract. And so the voltage at that particular physical spot will be less than the original voltage. And that doesn't move either. And so there is a continuous uh, contour between the voltage peak and it goes down to the voltage minimum and then back up again. And that, that uh, position, that position of the voltage peak and the voltage minimum, that is called a standing wave. And it's called standing wave because it physically doesn't move. And if you have a really long coax that's, that's many half waves long, you'll get this repeating pattern. So is that good or bad? Well, for, is, if you're running a lot of power, it may be bad because at that voltage peak, it may exceed the voltage rating of the coax if you're running a lot of power. Also, um, somewhere else where the voltage is at the, at the minimum, you'll get a current peak, and you could actually melt things there. So, I mean, again, this is if you're running very skinny coax and very high power. So the, uh, the reflected wave comes rolling back from the antenna, gets to the transmitter or your tuner, and 
No, it does not get absorbed by the transmitter. It reflects again and heads back out what's left of it because there's some there's attenuation going out, there's attenuation coming back, and there's attenuation going out again. So this happens on a continuous basis. Now, the depending on the mismatch, you that difference between between the maximum voltage point and the minimum voltage point is a ratio of one is, you know, it is say three to one, two to one, one point one to one compared to the original. So if you have a perfect antenna with it perfectly absorbs all the energy out of the coax and goes out and blows it out to the universe, that will have no reflected wave and you will have one to one SWR because the voltage along the whole length on average will be the same, minus attenuation, blah blah blah. Um, if you have a reflected wave, it's going to vary from one place to another. So do you have a 1.1 to 1 SWR? means there's a little bit of a reflected wave. If you have a 2 to 1 SWR, there's a larger reflected wave, etc. So now we get into the practicalities. If you have a 1 to 1 SWR, life is perfect. If you have a dummy load out there, you get a 1 to 1 SWR. If you have a 1.1 to 1 SWR, break out the champagne because it's just as good. And you're pretty good uh, no matter what you're running, other than maybe, you know, moon bounce where every micro, uh, micro, micro amp counts. But anything up to 1.5 to 1, you're done. You don't really need to mess with it unless you're a purist that likes to mess with things. You get beyond that, especially if it's a long coax and especially if it's at VHF and up, it matters more. On 75 meters, say, if you've got anything under 2 to 1, have a nice day. So...